Good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Damon, proud principal here at Morrell Dobbins CTE High School. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you back to a new school year like none we have ever seen before. This evening, the town hall session is primarily your opportunity to ask questions of us about what you can expect for next year. Normally, we wouldn't have this type of session for grades 10 through 12, as you are already pros and you know what to expect. However, this year, it's all up in the air, as you would think, but we really have an exciting year planned for you. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to go around the room and we're going to introduce ourselves to you so that you know who you're talking to. And then if you would notice at the bottom right hand of your screen in your chat box, you get to ask us any questions you want about this school year. We will be narrated by Mr. Harris Daniels, a freshman English teacher and film teacher at Dobbins, who will feed us the questions as you type them in. Thank you. Good evening, families. It is a pleasure to be with you today. My name is Huey A. Douglas, the proud assistant principal at Dobbins. I'll be responsible for 11th and 12th grade. My role is to support Dr. Damon as we continue to educate and prepare students for the world. I look forward to getting to know all of you as we start a brand new school year. Be well. Hi, I am Siobhan Thompson. I am the 10th grade assistant principal. And as my colleague, uh, Dr. Damon, as well as Hugh Douglas mentioned, we are here to support you to make sure that you and your family feel welcome here at Dobbins and have a successful academic and social school year. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Leah Russell, Mrs. Russell, and I am the climate manager here at Dobbins. I'm here, yes, the climate manager, you hear that and you think of discipline, but I'm here to help you and your students and the families. This is a holistic approach. We do all of this together, navigate through this, your high school years. So welcome class of 2024. Hello everyone. I'm Ms. Hickson, the counselor for the 10th grade scholars. I am here to help your students. This will be the first year that they will be starting their shops. So it will be something new uh, that they will be learning along with their academic subjects. But I'm here to help you and them in any way that I can. So I look forward to getting to know each and every one of you. Thanks. Good evening. My name is Maya Allen. I work with Stepping Stone, Stepping Stone Scholars through Temple University. I look forward to working with you through the after school clubs, as well as the college and workforce experience. Good evening, Dr. Damon and administrators and climate staff. Our first question is, what do these students need to do with their Chromebooks in order to get ready for the first day of school? So the first thing that all students need to do right before school, possibly um, Tuesday night, is to turn your computer completely off and then turn it back on so that you restart the system and it's ready for class the next day. Thank you. Our second question is, uh, for 10th grade, do we have to have our cameras on for Zoom? I assume this is for classes. Ms. Russell? Yes. Okay, Thompson, you wanna explain that further? Yes, yes I would. Uh, I would think that it would be really nice for you to be visible and uh, for your first day of class and all of your classes. And the reason being is that, you know, teachers do not, do not get to know you just because of the assignments that you are turning in, right? Is whether or not you're, when you're visible, they can be able to get to know you better. They can tell whether or not if you're struggling with an assignment, they can be able to look at you and get personal and then start feeding off of your energy. So I would say, yes, and 
invite yourself, right? And also try to not only just be in the classroom, but be a part of your, your classroom community. And I guarantee you, the more effort that you are putting forth in your classroom, the more you will succeed and get more out of the class. So again, being visible is not just to be there. It is to be present and be a part of the community in itself. So yes, <laughs> please be visible. Get up in the morning, put on a nice shirt, keep on your pajama pants if you must. But yes, be be present and be there and be a part of your community. And I would add also for the 11th and 12th grade, the expectation is that yes, students need to be prepared because we're preparing you for success and such. You have to prepare yourself in terms of not only what you are thinking, but also what you are wearing. So to that um, question, it would be yes. Our next question is about the school schedule. Since quarantine, is the schedule the same as if we were in school or if it is different, how do we find the schedule? Ms. Hickson, you want to take that question? Yes. On the school's website, there is a link for you to look at the virtual schedule so that you know what times classes are starting and what time they're ending. There is a little bit of adjustment, but they're pretty much the same as it was last school year. And also on my virtual class page, if you click on my clock, you will also find the virtual schedule there. And if I can just sum up that all students should have access to their own rosters now through their student portal. And you can then find your roster and line it up against the student schedule. However, for all students, you can expect that we're gonna run a full school day from 7.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Thank you. Another question. What if a student does not yet have a Chromebook? How do they get one? So um, again, if you go to the school district website, you can uh, find information on Chromebooks, but I think that is also listed on our school website. It says, if you need a Chromebook, click here, you click here. There are three different locations that you can get a Chromebook from. You should start now and get them as soon as possible so that you can turn it on and make sure that it works. Another question. I have biotechnology class. How are they going to do that class virtually? Great question. You should know that all of our CTE classes are working very diligently. They are creating many experiments, different hands on things that they can start you with the theoretical because as we all know, safety is first. So we're gonna start off with safety in all CTE programs and you don't need to be in the space to learn about safety. Then we're gonna learn about sanitation. And then as we get through there, we will be working on getting small student kits and things like that, that we may have you pick up or we'll pull things together that you can find around your house that you can follow along with the teacher and actually do little mini experiments or try out hands-on experiments. And the same thing goes for cosmetology and barbering. We're gonna find different hands-on experiences that you can do from home. Remember, right now, we're only thinking that we may be here in this space until November. However, if it extends further, we will just extend our thinking and prepare other activities that you can do at home. Um, this is also a question about schedules, but about each student's uh, individual schedule. How do I find that, find out what classes I have and who my teachers are? Yes, if you log on to the school district's website and you go to your Infinite Campus page and you click on the tab that says schedule, you should see your schedule there as well as the name of your instructor. Thank you. Next question. What do we know at this point about state testing? Good question. Right now, we don't know anything about state testing. Last year, when we finished in March, 
they put out guidance at that time. Right now, I think they are still trying to determine whether we're going back to school in April, May, and March again. And at that point, they will make a decision because remember, state testing is in May. So we have some time to get more information. So I would say right now, let's plan to be back in school sometime this year. That would be a great thing if we can get all of this um, under control, flatten the curve. Um, so I would just say, let's hold tight and, and worry about that closer to around March or April. Thank you. Uh, similar to the question about biotechnology, another CTE question. I have graphic design. How will we do that class? I know you kind of answered this already. Yes. And so again, um, you all have the Chromebooks. There are going to be things that the teacher can teach you because remember, graphic design is a completely technical class. So there will be software that the teacher will have you log on and give you demonstrations. Our teachers have been professionally developed on the latest technologies so that they can really engage you in the instructional process. Another question, um, will we have any equipment for our shops at home? So uh, as I mentioned before, we are now starting to look at different vendors. We're trying to find out what type of tools and things that we can pull together and trying to find out if we can make mini kits for students and programs so that you can do some of your um, activities at home. So that's something that we're really still trying to develop. But again, like I said, we're going to start off with safety. Every shop, no matter what it is, there is shop safety. So that will take a couple of weeks. Then there's also um, infection control and sanitation, especially now with COVID. We have to pay attention to that and learn the technologies for that. And then by that time, we will know more about the kits and things like that. But trust and believe our teachers are now looking online, they're working with vendors and they're pulling together kits that we can have for you. Next question. Uh, what happens when we have our lunch periods? What do we do? So um, I'm going to hope this is the last one that I can answer and I can let somebody else answer, okay? Um, but I wanted to mention while I answer that question. So when you have a class, if you have a first and second period class and it's 90 minutes, you should know for that 90 minutes, 60 of the minutes, you will be live instruction online with your teacher. Then the last 30 minutes, the teacher's going to let you off to continue an independent assignment. Then you log back on for your next period class, your third period class. For everyone, our third period is generally our advisory. We're now turning advisory into what we call community meetings. After community meetings, you go to your fourth period. When it is your lunchtime, you get to sign off for your 30 minutes of your time for lunch. You go have lunch at home, and then you sign back on for your next scheduled class. Okay, this next one's very important. Please keep the questions coming. How do I record my attendance? So, so to record your attendance, you do have to go and log in. You have to sign yourself present. You have to sign yourself present when you go into the classroom. Then the teacher will in turn mark you present as well. It is very important that you sign in in each classroom each day so that your attendance is verified by the teacher. And, and just so that we're clear, it's not like in the spring where you had to click present and the teacher click presence. You being visible in the class, participating as if you were in a physical classroom. That's how the teacher will know you're there and mark you present. Thank you. Next question. Will we be able to get any apps for our shops on the Chromebook? So depending on what the class is and what we purchase, I'm going to say maybe. So I won't say yes to everything because you might be in a class that doesn't need a particular app. So that's something that your teacher will give you guidance on. 
Uh, next question. Should I still purchase the kit for my daughter for cosmetology or should I wait? So what I would say is, um, I would say yes, um, because we want to make sure that when you purchase the kits, they will be delivered to the school. And once we get the, get back to the school, we want to make sure that everything you need is there. We don't want to wait until we get back to school. Then we're saying, okay, now we're going to come up with the $250. Then we have to wait about a month for everybody to get that. Then we have to wait for the vendor to bring it in. If you want to go one now, you can go right on our website. It's where you say um, donate and then you click it and then you look for cosmetology and then you pay um, for the kit there. Okay, and we have a couple questions about uh, students with jobs. If you're a senior and have a job, could you have a work schedule? And also how about students who have a job? We are not doing work schedules. We have never done work schedules and we are not doing them this year as well. Again, this is something I know is very new. Um, everyone does have to be flexible, but you are still in school. So that means that you are still going to have to be, like we said before, present in your classes, cameras on, dressed appropriately, and ready for class. So no, you will not be receiving a work schedule. We are still a, not a 7.30 to 2.30 school. If I can add to that, because um, I think I heard that that question may have come from a senior student. I'm going to ask all seniors, check your email. Here's a problem I have. We are trying to get with many of our uh, seniors because we need to have some parent meetings and we're not getting a response. So I'm going to ask if there's any seniors on the line. And guess what? I would even say to juniors and sophomores also, check your student email. We are starting to send some uh, emails out to you because some of the uh, numbers we have on the website or on our system are not accurate numbers for home. So we're asking you to help us get in touch with your parents. Also parents, we do need you to call the school or do a contact us and update your contact information because we've been having um, challenges trying to get in touch with some parents. All right, next question. How do we get all of our hours as a senior? I'm gonna think that's a cosmetology or barbering student. And if that is the case, um, by you still being in class virtually, you still get hours. All right, this next question is uh, from a parent of a first year freshman student. How will he get his classes and how does he link in for online classes? Yes, that student is to do as every student does. They go to the school district's website and they click log in. Once they click log in, then they will go to their student page and then that's where they will see their schedule. And then their teachers will provide them the schedule for when they are to sign into their class for the synchronous learning. And then they will also have time where they will do independent learning. So the student has to log into their school district um, student page. Thank you, Ms. Hickson. Uh, next question. What happens if my internet goes out during the day? Am I able to make up the work? And what does my parent need to do? I mean, I would say if your internet goes out, which unfortunately can happen, when the internet comes back on, inform the teachers that something happened in terms of the connection. And uh, I'm sure the teacher will be more than happy to make up, or give you the work so you can make it up. Uh, that's the uh, most up-to-date question we have right now, Dr. Damon. I don't know if we want to uh, take a moment to address any concerns or wait for a couple of questions to come in. Well, I guess what we can do is, um, first, I want to go back to the um, being out for the internet. If you're absent from class or if you're absent from school for any reason, it's still recorded as an absence. 
So you definitely need to make sure that you um, bring or have your parents send an email directly to the teacher or contact the teacher so that we can record um, an excused absence. Uh, but the district will be doing truancy as if they did in the past pre-COVID. So we wanna make sure that we are following all truancy regulations. At this time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, ask Ms. Allen, who is our coordinator of after-school programs. If you don't mind, um, I hate to put you on the spot. If you could just kind of give them a little idea of the after-school programs that we have and uh, you know, like what your role is and how they can get in touch with you. And I'm just gonna ask after Ms. Allen, if everybody else would give a little bit about, you know, their role in the organization. Sure. Again, my name is Ms. Allen. I work for Temple Stepping Stone Scholars. I do work closely with Dr. Damon as well as the leadership team to provide you with uh, the after school process and walk you through all of the clubs and activities that we have um, here at Dobbins. To be honest with you, we're still working out the logistics about every single club that will be going on for this upcoming school year. I'll have everything up and running on my classroom uh, website by September the 2nd. So you'll be able to actually go on, click the club that you're interested in. All of the paperwork will be loaded on, all of the required paperwork, and it'll take you directly to the after school club. So you won't have to look for a link or anything. It'll be right there. You'll click on the page and then it'll take you right to the club. Um, also, I'm here to assist you with any um, college and workforce uh, experiences that you will need to go through throughout your career here at Dotbase. So again, if you need to reach me, I'll be glad to provide you my email address, which is M as in Mary, A as in Apple, L as in Lion, L as in Lion, E as in Edward, N as in Nancy, at steppingstonescholars.org. Thank you. Yes, hello, I'm Ms. Hicks and the counselor. For those 10th grade students, um, we will be, well not just 10th grade students, we will be providing opportunities for students to share issues or concerns because as I'm sure you know, and we all know that this COVID has changed things for us and has stirred up a lot of emotions in all of us. So I am here to help people sort through those emotions, work through those emotions um, so that they can get their work done and do the best that they can do. But we also have a partnership with the um, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, which has a program for students who may be experiencing um, depression or to help them lessen the possibilities of them being depressed, uh, having a, a study with them. So if we have people, students who are interested in that, you can certainly reach out to me uh, through an email and I can connect you to those people. Hi, my name is Ms. Russell. I am the climate manager here at Morrell Dobbins High School. We also have something called a care team. The care team consists of a social worker, both counselors for ninth and 10th grade, as well as 11th and 12th grade. Um, we have some climate specialists, climate support staff that will um, help navigate everyone through high, the high school process. And that's ninth through 12th graders. And by saying that, I say that we will still be having groups. We will still have um, partners that we work with that are outside partnerships that will be doing male groups, female groups, uh, unisex groups. Um, we have um, the Gay Straight Alliance. We have a bunch of different programs in addition to our after school programming to help support students, but to also have them go have a great high school year, high school um, career as well. So I just want you to keep in mind that school doesn't just stop at the classroom. It doesn't just stop at the end of the after school programs either. We have some other groups to help support families. So when it comes to our upper school, 11th and 12th grade, the expectation is for students to meet with the teachers, talk in terms of rather the teacher will be talking to you regarding uh, what the expectations are in the classroom. Uh, the expectations may vary based on your CTE program. 
we uh, encourage our teachers to think creative to, creatively when it comes to how we're educating, since everything will be online, but trust that it will be meaningful and students get the most out of it when you put the most into it. We also will have credit recovery. So if students didn't do well in the 10th grade and 9th or 11th, that is an opportunity for them to make up those classes so they can graduate on time. And then also as we prepare our students for college and um, whatever careers they will go into as they graduate, we will have a FAFSA night for our parents so that as students are thinking about their next step, that they are prepared in terms of financially being able to make those choices and decisions to be successful when they graduate from college or rather graduate from high school and then graduate from college. Awesome, but let's talk about 10th grade. 10th grade, uh, how exciting is it to now that they will be uh, balancing two curriculums at this time? So they will have, they will continue on with their academics and this will be their first year starting off with their CTE programs. So, you know, before it was just like all math, all science and they just had art, but now they are about to start training for uh, industry related certification. You know, this is something that high school graduates and college level students are actually doing. You know, how awesome is this opportunity that Dobbins uh, gives? So I am here to make sure that your student is able to balance them both and stay on track for graduation at the same time. So this is gonna require a lot more discipline and a lot more focus than usually that they have been. So, um, I am asking that we will progress monitor their uh, academics as well as their CTE um, course completion uh, assignments bi-weekly. So every two weeks, we have to continue to make sure that we check their grades. They have it in the palm of their hands. Their student portal will show them where they stand at. They can have a check and reflect. They tell them where their attendance are. You know, they say that 95% of attendance is a sign of saying that they will be on track for graduation. When we check their grades, every two weeks and making sure that they are not missing any assignments, that they are okay, that they're not struggling. If they are, then we have tutoring. We have all of these resources and we don't want to wait to the last minute. Remember that Dobbins has a lot of opportunities for them for college preparedness. They can be able to have those industry related certifications as well as the opportunity to become entrepreneurs. And we don't want to, <laughs> we do not want our students to miss out on this uh, grand opportunity that we offer here for free, you know, and this is their first year. They be embarking on it for three more additional years, and we want to make sure that they start off strong. So remember progress monitoring every two weeks. We want to check those grades. Just ask them, pull your grades up. Let me check your attendance, making sure that they do everything to stay on track for graduation and earn those industry-related certifications. So that's what we're here for, and I'm so excited to help them out. Um, we just want to uh, point people to in the chat on the YouTube that you're watching right now. Our school social worker, Ms. Shamar David Featherson, has put her info out there. So students, parents, community members, you can get in touch with Ms. Shamar. And um, she can also update uh, any family's new numbers, uh, which she's put there in the chat. Um, we're going to resume our questions. And we have a question. If you are having problems understanding the work, will teachers have tutoring time built in? Hi, yes, that's a perfect segue to what I was about to say. Um, all textbook information will be online and teachers will instruct students on how to access that. And also if a student is having difficulty with a, a subject, then they are to let the teacher know because the teacher is there to provide that extra assistance if the student needs it. And then if the teacher is not able um, to help the student, then 
they will look for other resources. But the teacher is always the first line of defense when a student is struggling with the subject. Thank you. Is um, the next question? Is there some place that parents can go to get help with the technology? Uh, I'll take that one. So uh, starting next week, we will have um, a face liaison, that's family and community engagement. Her name is Jamie Call. And all you have to do is just kind of do a contact us again, let us know what you need. And she will be doing various workshops on parent portal or whatever else it is you need. She'll make sure that if she doesn't know it herself, she'll bring in the resources to engage with parents. Um, while we're on that, let me also mention parents, you'll note that um, while you're not new to Dobbins, every third Thursday at 10 o'clock, we do have our uh, monthly SAC meeting. Now that we're home and we're doing this online, parents, we're really asking that you would engage and be a part of the school community um, to the extent that you can during that time. Um, next question. Um, are we going to have tests or projects? Yes, there will definitely be tests and there'll be projects. So I want you to think of this as a virtual school, but still school. So there are still will be expectations for students to pass and to do well in class. Uh, as a parent asked in terms of if there are rather uh, students asking if they need uh, support with anything. Uh, yes, teachers will be able to support students. Uh, it, I mean, th those things are virtual. It still is expectation for students to learn and for teachers to teach and for us to help each other. Next can question. I also add it, oh, go ahead. Sorry, can I also add, because this is a great segue to mention the math and English interventions, right? So uh, yes, you will have tests and projects, but also you will have uh, opportunity to um, to strengthen your skills, right? We offer um, Achieve 3000 and Imagine Math. They are both interventions that work on your level. So do not be afraid or uh, hesitant when you have tests and projects because you will have all the tools that's necessary to build up your competency level so that you can ace those tests and do the best you can in those projects. So again, Achieve 3000 that was offered last year is still offered this year and as well as Imagine Math. So you can no limit, no limit. Any free time that you have or so have you remember is on your level is personal one to one instruction to get you ready for those tests and get you ready to ace those projects. So uh, you have a lot of tools and I ask that you use them. Next question. Uh, will it be easier to use a, a smartphone or a laptop for our getting online for classes? I think that would be a matter of convenience and what's available for you. Um, but it, I think it's also important to make sure that your operating system for whatever that you're using is up to date so that you're able to um, freely and, and be able to uh, communicate and, and uh, the Zoom program is able to or Google Hangout will be able to manage the data and the bandwidth. We had a, a question earlier about state tests, but this one's specifically about the the state boards and NACTI testing. I'm not sure if that was fully addressed. Um, and so again, NACTI and state boards are all um, state mandated tests. They fall under the same response. We have to wait and get guidance from Harrisburg on that. Since those tests usually come in the spring, I think before they make a final decision, they wanna just wait and see what happens with um, these school closures, whether we're in person or online. Thank you. Next question. Will we still be able to play any sports this year? And if so, how will we sign up? And are there other activities with sports that are not competitive teams? that might be intramural or competing against others in the school? So what I can tell you right now about sports, because a lot of that is a hot topic across the state, 
PIAA has said that school districts can make that decision locally. And the school district of Philadelphia has said there will be no athletic sports until January. Now, what I will tell you is we still have coaches and we will still pull young people together. We will still recruit because guess what? Even if you are on the football team, we're going to ask that our coaches reach out to either former or current uh, students interested in being on the team because you need to maintain your academic eligibility, whether you're on the field or off the field. Uh, as far as other clubs and activities and, and different things, we learned last year um, with the help of our great teachers and Miss Allen, we can still have a lot of fun virtually. And so we had a talent show. We, you know, we did a lot of different things through the internet last year. And that was with very limited knowledge. We've had several months to get our act together. And so we're, we're gonna have a lot of fun this year as well. Uh, the next question asks how you can sign up for those different clubs and activities. Uh, I don't know if uh, Ms. Allen already said that. Sure. Um, also, I will go ahead and list it on our school website and it'll be up by September the 2nd, where you'll just go on, click the after school, Dobbins after school programming, and it'll take you directly to the signups for the different clubs. Thank you, Ms. Allen. You're welcome. Uh, next question. If a specific teacher assigns printouts, does the parent have to print it out? Can you repeat that so, question again? Yeah, as a teacher, I, I know we're not really requiring anyone printing anything out. So I, I think the answer to this one is no, we're not requiring anyone have a printer or do printed work. Um, so the next question, how will class dues and pictures work? I believe that's from a senior. So when it comes to class dues, and that's a great question, uh, we'll be able to answer that as the year proceeds further. Uh, but so stay tuned. However, let me just say, um, in speaking with Mr. Douglas, he has a lot of exciting things planned for the seniors. Um, we won't miss a beat. If you saw our graduation on the YouTube page, it was dynamic. So again, we are really ready for this year. We're gonna figure this out together, but what we don't wanna do is make plans and decisions without the students and the parents. So as we move through the year, we're gonna have different town halls like this just for the senior class and mr douglas is going to take your feedback and we're going to plan accordingly all right next question um do we have to be connected to zoom or can we just do the work and make sure that it's done or at least listen do i have to be on a zoom yes you do you are supposed to be, like you said, you need to be face-to-face, -face, you need to be visible. Again, you need to be not only um, logged on, but present. So seeing your face and being present in the classroom, interacting with not only your peers, but with your teacher is very important. So yes, you are to be present in class on the actual Zoom or Google Meets or however they, you know, you guys are having your classroom, you must be present. Camera on, dressed, not to impress, but dressed. No pajamas, um, no tank tops, no, I'm not saying you have to wear your uniforms, but you are to be dressed appropriately. Um, same rules apply online that apply for in school. We don't wanna see too much of anything that we should not see. Um, so please make sure you are present, visible, and dressed appropriately. Yes, and to piggyback on what Ms. Russell just said, yes, you have to be online whatever modem or platform that your teacher is using to provide instruction. But then there are also ways to get information or instruction because we will have um, Google Classrooms, and virtual classrooms, which will provide additional information. So the Google classrooms are more information based for myself. Um, there will be instances where you can do um, respond to questions or discussions or chats 
uh, as part of the Google Classroom, but either Google Classroom or a video visual portion will be required. Um, there's a question, I believe, for you, uh, Ms. Hickson. Uh, how do we get in touch with the counselor if we need to talk to someone? As part of the um, Dobbins webpage, you will find my virtual classroom there with my contact information. It has my email address, and it also has the code for the Google Classroom that I have set up for 10th grade students as well as 9th grade students. Um, but to put it quickly, khickson at phillasd.org. khickson at phillasd.org. Also, if anyone needs a uh, service or help with the internet, um, Comcast Internet Essentials is available to you. Just contact us at the school and we'll provide you with a direction as to how you can obtain uh, Comcast Internet Essentials. Uh, we have a question coming in. How do we deal with students' IEP goals in the virtual learning? Great question. Um, so we don't intend to uh, miss a beat at all. Now, for example, if it's instructional, we already have started reaching out to some parents, you know, making sure that we can still have a Zoom meeting to have an IEP team meeting to talk about how we're going to best um, support our students. If it is something that is like um, occupational hearing or some other type of therapy that your child is um, instructed to have through their IEP, I've already heard from our speech therapist. And just like, again, you can do your therapy through a uh, Google Classroom or through a Zoom, but we will be setting those up. Now, for students who are in grades 10 through 12, we already know what you have and need, and we're already preparing for you. Any ninth grade parents who are new to the school, we are now just going through those IEPs. So if you know of something that you wanna make us aware of, please again, use the contact us for right now because it's gonna take us a couple of days to get the, uh, the directory up on the webpage. Okay, next question. Do, you, do the students have to pay for Zoom? No, I believe Zoom is giving um, basic account out free right now. It's a very limited account. You can't have a, um, a, a web a account and have a meeting for more than 30 minutes. But if you go on Zoom, I think that everyone can get a free basic account. You have to pay to get a, a higher price one. And another question about live classes how does how will it work if a student has to leave from the camera for a second to take a break then the student should let the teacher know um that they need to step away for a moment you know we know that we have to be flexible uh with this process so the teacher should be accommodating but we would expect that the student would return as quickly as possible back to the, um, the live uh, version of the class. Uh, we just want to remind people uh, to keep your questions coming in the live chat in YouTube. We have about 12 minutes before we'll take the last question and wrap up for the evening. If I could just add to the question about um, needing to step away from the camera, I mean, we all have emergencies, but again, um, like I even told the children when we are in the building, you have to remember that we're preparing you for college and career. We don't just get to jump up and leave out the classroom or walk away from our desk whenever we want to. So if every class for a 90 minute class, like I mentioned before, Yes, you'll be on for 60 minutes and then you get 30 minutes to log off and then do your independent work. I would strongly recommend when students get up in the morning, go to the bathroom, do whatever you need to do, do your first 60 minutes of a 90 minute class. Then if you need to go excuse yourself or do whatever, you're offline, do it during that time. But to waste your uh, time off screen 
doing nothing. And then you wait until it's time for class. And now you want to go to the bathroom. I mean, we are preparing you for careers. Okay. And there are a lot of careers that you don't get to just jump up and say, oh, I have to go to the bathroom. All right. If you have some kind of medical issue or something that takes you offline on a regular basis, we are going to ask that you just provi provide some type of doctor's note. We don't, we understand HIPAA regulations. We're not asking for your business, but what we are asking for a doctor to say that this student must be excused uh, throughout the day. But again, that would be over and above every hour that you're already getting to be off the, off the screen. Um, and the next question we have is, how do students log into Zoom or go on the classes? And, and we should make sure we're checking our email and going in uh, Infinite Campus to, to find your Google Classrooms, and those will have the links for your teacher's classes. Um, and then there's a question about advisory or homeroom. How will that work, and what will they be doing during that time virtually? Advisory is built in into your schedule. So as you check your schedule, you'll see when your advisory time is. And during your advisory time, you are to check in. You are to go to your actual advisory, advisory class virtually. And there we'll be doing something called community meetings. So it's very important that you are um, at advisory and that you are present in advisory and that your camera is on during advisory and that you are dressed appropriate during advisory and that you are there during advisory. That is not a class that you, um, you know, technically get a credit or anything for, but it is built into your schedule and you need to be marked present. Advisory is also a time where your attendance is taken. So please don't forget that. That happens while you're in school in the actual building and also during this virtual time as well. So please go to your advisory and it is built into your schedule. Thank you. We, we just have a couple of questions that have been answered already about lunch breaks. You'll get a 30 minute lunch. Um, we will be compiling all the answers to these questions into a frequently asked questions uh, and question and answer document that will be made available on the school website soon. Um, so we are gonna start wrapping up unless there are any more questions. Oh, there is one. How will purchasing uniforms work this year? Okay, so um, again, virtually you don't have to really worry about your uniforms, just be dressed appropriately. But when we do go back into the building, uniform purchases will be done and we will um, make accommodations for that. You'll have more information about that when we get there, when we'll be selling the uniforms and all of those things. Well, this will be an exciting year. Um, this is different, definitely. But it's about embracing those changes. And as we talk to our teachers and we talk to ourselves in terms of having a growth mindset versus a fix. So it's, it's really important for all of us to be open to this change and make it work. I thank you for this time. Hi, uh, to conclude, I would like to say that uh, What's going on today in our world, in our society, uh, I think out of all, we notice that how education is our key and sticking together is our key, right? To moving forward in a better way. So I would ask that all students and parents, let us work together uh, and preparing your child or yourself as the student for college and career, because it's going, it's you. It's all about you, and you are our future leaders, and that is what we believe in. Today's scholars, tomorrow leaders. So I ask that you walk in your virtual classroom, being a scholar and wanting to be a leader, and being prepared to be that leader uh, within the next three, two, <laughs> or the, your graduating year. You know, it's all about your mindset, as uh, Mr. Douglas had mentioned. And I ask if we can team together and get the seriousness of what Dobbins has to offer, because we have the opportunities for you. And if we can just be together, <laughs> I'm telling you, you will be awesome, 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 awesome. And I'm just so excited to work with you.
Um, we do have one additional question here. Um, it's uh, from a student who is diabetic and has a doctor's note at the school nurse and at Dobbins, uh, the school nurse at Dobbins. Do I still have to show the doctor's note and how will that work? If you're looking for uh, some type of accommodation while home and being diabetic, what I would suggest that you do is do a contact us and make sure that we meet with your parents, you, the nurse, the school nurse, and the counselor to make sure that we come together and we support you in any way necessary. Because as we all know that um, people work, play, and go to school with diabetes. So, you know, we don't want to get into anything specific right now online, but please do a contact us. We'll get you in touch with the nurse and we'll make sure that we accommodate you and whatever you need. Thank you, Dr. Damon and the leadership team of Dobbins. We're going to wrap up now and we just really appreciate everyone's questions. If any other questions do come in after we've wrapped up, they can be addressed in the uh, uh, chat or uh, and will be put in the frequently asked questions and answers. And again, we thank you and we're excited about this year. And a few last words from Dr. Damon. You're on mute. You're on mute. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask for those who have not given their final words, like Ms. Russell, Ms. Allen, Ms. Hickson, to please, you know, give your last words of encouragement before we get started this year, and then I'll close us out. First, I would like to just thank everyone for um, asking your questions and actually taking the time out to um, get online and to see who it is you have um, in front of your student every day. Because again, we are an extended family. We want to be part of your family as well as you're a part of ours. So I just wanted to definitely thank you all for coming online and actually asking some questions and giving us the opportunity to answer those questions face to face. And again, I just ask that we are in an ever changing world. So if you just continue to be flexible and patient with us um, as things change for not only you, it also changes for us. And I just wanted to thank you again for just being present today. Just to echo what Ms. Russell said, again, I do thank you for attending this evening session. Just know that we are here for you. Um, our doors are open virtually, but we're here for you. Um, please feel free to reach out to us and just know that Dobbins is a special place. Hi, I look forward to reconnecting or connecting with you as we begin this uh, virtual school year. I'm always here to help each and every one of you. So please reach out to my Google Classroom page or you can send me an email so that we can all be on the same page because I'm here to help you. And I know that you will be successful and I can't wait to see you when we get back to that school. Thanks. And so as I bring this, uh, this evening to a close, I just wanna thank each and every one of you for taking just at least one hour out of your day to make sure that we can all be as one as we prepare for our young people's success. But um, I can't end this day without acknowledging folks that um, in addition to COVID, this has just been a really um, unusual year, right? We, we witnessed the murder of George Floyd. We saw the civil unrest and the protests that took place as a result. We just witnessed also the shooting of the gentleman seven times in the back. So folks, we need to make sure, and, and I'll say this all the way up until election day, we need to cast our voice, we, our vote. We need to make sure that we are one, register to vote. Our seniors, we want to make sure that every senior is registered to vote this year that is eligible. Also, you should know that we're working with the commissioner's office and every senior that wants a job working as at the polls will have one. They will be trained. We need to make sure not only that we're registered, that we get our families and friends registered. Then after you're registered, make sure you're online to get a mail-in ballot. Don't believe the hype. People are saying that the mail's not going to work. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to be counted. Folks, please, let's not play into that. We know what it's about. Get your mail-in ballot, and then guess what? When you get it, 
Don't sit it on the table and say, I'll take care of it tomorrow. Take care of it as soon as you get it and then take it to the mailbox. If there are drop boxes and we're made aware of them, we will let you know. Is this is an important year. As I said for the freshman orientation, the next four years are going to make a difference in all of our lives. We saw what the last four years did for many of us. Also remember, this is a new four years for our students as well. So we wanna make it count. Another thing that I wanna um, mention to you that it is still time to complete your census, folks. You can go online and take care of the census. Whatever it is you believe about, they're trying to get in my business, they wanna know about my household, they wanna know who lives with me, not gonna affect any of that. But what it is gonna do, it brings resources. So if we had that mentality that, oh, I'm not gonna say anything what goes on in this house, stays in this house, guess what? We won't get anything. My mother always said, closed mouth, don't get fed. So what we gonna do? Again, folks, we are here for you. We are super excited. I want to thank you. You are thanking us. We're reading the chats, but just know that our team is on fire. I am so proud of all my teachers, my APs, my counselors, my coordinators. I could not be more proud as a principal. And so I, I just can't wait to see you all online in your classes because I'm going to be popping in. Um, I know Ms. Russell, Ms. Um, Ms. Maya, Ms. Hickson, Mr. Douglas, Ms. Thompson, everybody is super excited. And so we just ask you all, please gear up, get ready, because on Wednesday at 730, we're going to be there looking for you. So thank you all and have a good night. <laughs>